before, but earlier I spoke to David Costa with Manus and with Caroline. He's dean and professor at Robert Kennedy College, Zurich, and he said there's still some unknowns out there. I don't think it draws a real uh, line in the sand, but what it tells is that in this case the government has been very prompt on acting, and that's certainly a positive for the banking sector in Europe to see that now there is this quick intervention without too much disruption. But that said, it's also on the other side a bit uh, symptomatic of uh, seeing that the, the, the evolution of the banking sector is not over yet, and there might be some other surprises there. That's why I say it's not really yet a line in the sand. We don't know. It was a bit of a surprise to see that all those accounts didn't match at the end and that's I think the, con the concerning side is really uh, that's why a lot of investors want to stay away from banking still because there is so much opacity still there which uh, we have to be careful still and John you do the math and it's something you brought up at the end of countdown Portugal had about 6.4 billion euros remaining from its EU led bailout in 2011 the bailout of BES cost 4.9 billion. They've got 1.5 billion remaining. Who, who pays for the next bailout? That is the big question this morning, Mark Barton. Thank you very much for that. And I'm going to pose that to you, Nicola Marinelli of Sturgeon Capital. Yeah. 